Hello Sage Seeds. If you're new to the channel, what we're all about here is making financial analysis more fun and accessible for everyone. I am the Chief Investment Officer of Sage Seeds Capital, and I've been recording myself going through annual reports live, hopefully putting out there what it looks like for a professional value investor to be researching companies in real time. Now, of course, in this day and age, I don't execute a single trade without having some sort of artificial intelligence back me up or at least flash warning signs that I can look back at later. So that's why on this channel, we do partner up near the end of the videos with the Sage Seeds AI. Today, we've got the 10K annual report of Alibaba Group Holding, certainly on the news all the time in Wall Street, likely to have been something that most people have heard about. I'm curious if anyone imagines this when they think of Alibaba right on the first page. Let's dive into the opening move so that our wisdom can blossom. Very adorable. This is one of those annual reports where they're just clogging up the beginning with all sorts of things. Letters from the CEO. Last time I read a letter from the CEO before looking at the opening move, it did not go well for me. You can probably find that video from the last season. So this time we're just going to skip all of this. Give us those numbers. The statement of cash flows. Chinese companies do report from left to right. And we will be ignoring the last column. Net income took a big dip in 2022 compared to 2021 and is still not even half of what it was two years ago. Certainly a very high level of business activity going on when you consider depreciation and AMWERT. The income statement. Revenue is ticking upwards in a way that isn't increasing the cost of revenue too badly. Which means that operating income is actually higher in the latest year than it was two years ago when net income looked so much nicer. The big, big difference is tens of billions of renminbi in this row, interest and investment income. They went from making tons of money there to now losing substantial amounts of money in the last couple of years. The balance sheets with the ratio of total assets to total liabilities hovering just under three You've been following along with the channel, company not really in growth mode at all. In conclusion of the opening move, tens of billions of renminbi swinging around because of those changes to investment income. That's where we're headed. Where was that coming from? What does the management think the future of that investment income looks like? They do give us a definition of investments in equity method investees. Basically, there is an investment fund packed into the middle of the big, big conglomerate. Here they're disclosing that that part of the business does run like an investment fund, investing directly into the common stock of publicly traded companies. The CFO's department has gotten into a pages and pages worth of descriptions of all of the major common stock holdings that they have. But the two takeaways from our perspective are the CFO department clearly thinks this is important, pages and pages of this. And then lastly, skimming through this, almost everything ends up with some d description of how they still have the stock, but the stock is down. But almost everything is down since it was purchased. Now moving over to the management, the CEO's office, they have a section called Summary of Major Related Party Transactions. Kind of an unclear title because when you look into it, I think the best way to summarize it is Alibaba impresses its influence through financial agreements. It might be a bit rude to simplify this way, but it's not an exaggeration to say that SoftBank, Ant Group and Affiliates, which is a whole long list, and then it continues investment funds, uh, specific billionaires they're calling out, directors and executive officers of a whole bunch of list of companies. All of these people have these transactions with Alibaba because Alibaba kind of strong arms. The big scary company, I'm not gonna say the word coercion, but making it known to anyone who's a major investment player in that part of the world that life will be easier for them if they give Alibaba a cut of the equity. If they don't give Alibaba a cut of the equity, Alibaba essentially starts creating competitors that are designed to just intimidation is one way to say it. But again, intimidation, coercion, those are big, scary words, and I am simplifying. But still, getting a 33% equity interest here, another 33% here, various cuts from different SoftBank investments, which are a Japanese company, essentially Alibaba in Japan. This title, major related party transactions can be slightly edited to the terms of peace. Not that uncommon, actually. Also in this management section, market price risk, saying that until they became listed in the NASDAQ a couple years ago, Alibaba didn't really care too much about the short-term price movements. 
Therefore, their business is set up for what they call long-term appreciation or quote unquote strategic purposes. We just discussed that. Second part, short-term accounting style does not vibe well with how the company has been managing accounting and setting itself up with this big investment fund wrapped around with all these other businesses that exist in order to direct business to the investment fund. Here, for example, they're describing that in the last two years, just a 1% difference in the market price of their portfolio holdings in the date of closing of the year for them, they estimate would lead to billions of differences, which would be recognized as income slash loss on the income statement because of US accounting rules. Now, those are the accounting rules of almost the entire world. It's not just the US, like most of the world has agreed that this is quote unquote fair. But for specifically Alibaba, essentially randomness of what the market price of their holdings are on a random day, just an arbitrary day in the year, has very significant differences to what their earnings per share is and to what their income statement looks like in general. Returning to the income statement, we now know that Alibaba sees itself as an investment fund that has the flexibility in investment negotiations by spinning up or otherwise entering or exiting industries if it doesn't like the terms of the investment opportunities that it is presented with. Hey, if you're getting more comfortable uncovering the stories behind the numbers, please like and subscribe. Very much the intention of Alibaba from the very beginning, as the annual report has been explaining, but doesn't feel that its business is being properly translated to international financial reporting standards. This row here, interest and investment income, is something that the business never once even thought of until it was needed to be in order to be listed in international markets. 72 billion, 15 billion, 11 billion. These numbers directly correspond to the market price of the majority of its in equity investments on March 31st every year, outwardly trying to explain that they don't care what the market price is on March 31st of every year. If instead we removed this row, we calculated net income, with an asterisk, net income this year is actually about 8%, 8 to 7% higher than net income two years ago, which while reading through the annual report is exactly the sort of net income growth rate that this company is planning for. Interest and investment income, this row exists in order to allow Alibaba to offer shares to international shareholders. And they're still committed to that idea, but so far, kind of this sense that what it's mostly done is just confused a whole lot of people. Alibaba learning that its whole core principles for running its business not encouraged in most of the world and therefore struggling to be translated into the minds of international investors. Alibaba is sometimes compared to Amazon. I've heard it referred to as the quote unquote Chinese Amazon. After going through this report, realizing that their main business is encouraging favorable investments by threatening to enter the industries and losing a bunch of money for everyone if they don't get them. That is like the Chinese Amazon. I normally don't like to draw attention to Amazon unless I absolutely have to. But SoftBank, Amazon, and now Alibaba, these companies are essentially reflections of each other, but contextualized in the different countries' cultures from where they're from. Amazon constantly having to stamp out rebellion, and most of us would recognize as quote unquote innovation. SoftBank very publicly, quote unquote, executing its underperforming businesses in order to send a message. And now Alibaba insisting that every business, no matter how big or small, needs to pay tribute, not willing to hold back and using the same heavy hand at all times. I'm honestly not sure <laughs> what to make of it. Doesn't necessarily vibe with me personally as an investor. Outside of my circle of competence, you know, I believe that it's completely fine to be a little intimidating now and again, but I just don't think it resonates with me enough to be able to look into the future of these industries. I'm not even sure I understand what industry these companies think they are in right now. Finance adjacent, I guess? With that in mind, let's see what the Sage Seeds AI thinks. No such reservations is possible in the mind of the AI. Please like and subscribe. Remember that now that we've heard the story behind the numbers, I encourage you to now try to guess if the Sage Seeds AI is going to give this a high or low ranking. Together, we're trying to build an intuition as to whether the stories behind the numbers do or do not represent value in the current markets. It's also tremendously helpful to 
explain your thinking to someone or at least write it down before you see the ranking, feel free to pause the video and do that now. Alibaba ranked literally number one out of 72 in value for the 2023 season so far. Could not get a higher ranking than it currently does. <laughs> oh, I wish I could invest in it now, but in the long term, it'll probably be better for me to stay away. I just don't have belief in what it is that they do. However, let me interpret what the Sage Seeds AI is picking up on. This business does not grow unless to encourage an ongoing negotiation with a quote unquote partner. We saw in the balance sheet that their total assets to liabilities was almost three. That's no growth mode. That is not an accident. Everything that is associated with Alibaba that isn't the investment fund exists purely to direct business towards the investment fund. Alibaba literally doesn't care if any of these businesses grow or not. They care that these businesses exist for as long as it is appropriate in order to encourage competitors to start paying tribute. And this is true of um, literally any of what they do, their video games, their shopping services, their logistics services. They give off the impression that they could shut down the entire thing tomorrow if they felt like enough had been done in the industry in order to secure Alibaba's equity ownership. Sage AI picking up on the fact that that means that Alibaba is extremely capital light. They're extremely disciplined in not using money unless it directly leads to them gaining. <laughs> Super focused on it. It's not exactly the cheapest company in the world, even with all the volatility in the stock price. But Alibaba ranking this high because of its remarkably impressive ability to not use cash. A lot of times the highest ranking companies are using a lot of cash. They're these runway type companies that you can put more and more and more cash into. Well, Alibaba figuring out how to do the exact opposite very successfully. You give them cash, they'll give it right back to you. Share buybacks, dividends, all these different things until the moment where they feel that there's an opportunity, then they'll clinically precisely do just enough to gain the opportunity and then not spend a dollar more. That's how you become ranked number one, at least so far. Given my biases, I'm very interested in seeing if as more companies release their 2023 figures, someone will knock this out of first place. If nothing else, I hope they do. <laughs> Just let me know what your reaction to this is in the comments. Share your wisdom, share this video.